Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So this afternoon on a sunny day in early November, I am around Little Europe area of Montreal, close to Sherbrooke Metro Station. I just love seeing these resi residential buildings of Montreal and these golden foliages covering the uh, sidewalk and these lovely vintage colors of the uh, building exteriors. So here I'm walking towards a cluster of uh, cafes and restaurants and I just discovered the new cafe on Google Map. It's called Cafe Un Garçon. I think it means Queen Boy. A little strange name. Yeah, the inside is kind of like in the 1980s. So as always, I sketched my little chocolate chip cookie and a cup of latte. And then I sketched some of the cute decorations hanging on the wall of the uh, cafe. So that big mouse Billy Bass is really nice old time memory. And also sketched the ornaments on the shelf up there. After that, I moved outside to sit around the patio area. And I sketched two people sitting on the uh, on the throne with a nice uh, blue sky background and the brick wall behind. So that's half of my page spread. And th now those two people are gone. I'm ready to sketch the view in front of me, the late afternoon sunshine illuminating the street and the buildings. So the drawing process is four times faster than my real-time drawing speed, okay? And so I just began drawing this foreground element, this tree, um, trying to see as many branches as I could and connect it with the main trunk. As I always mentioned in my previous videos, it's always helpful and easier to start an urban sketch with a foreground element. Uh, usually the tallest or the largest object in a scenery in the foreground. And just adding as many uh, twigs that I could see. When we're drawing a tree, we don't have to draw every single twig. There should be thousands of twigs on there. So try your best. So once you think once you think you capture the essence of the tree, you can just move on. And now I'm ready to connect the height of this um, road lamp and the street sign in relationship to the height of this tree. It's about the half of the height of the tree. And then a loose foliage form behind. And I'm, I'm also kind of breaking my usual routine by drawing from the left first. I'm right-handed. Um, it really depends on the situation. It's not always. The, so the game of sketching is never the same routine I really have to adjust my uh, choices and procedure according to the situation. And then I am connecting uh, the contour outline of these buildings in relationship to the height of the big tree. Okay. And then adding this tree on the left side. Again, drawing those uh, twigs very loosely and quickly. Adding some windows. So some people are always asking, do I use a pencil to do uh, like a layout sketch first? No, I am always being very spontaneous by drawing uh, directly with an ink pen without any pencil, thumbnail sketches or layout. So just directly. I already have the, a visual map in my mind before laying the first line on paper. And also just drew one person on the very left side and adding another little tree in between those two buildings there. With a hatching line around the ground level. This building is actually on the other side of the street, another block. And some more loose lines, just a couple lines to, to define this, the top of the buildings. And the bottom of these buildings are going upwards towards the right. Adding some more refined details for the tree tweaks and adding this uh, flower bed or something in the distance. The curb that really helps with the perspective, leading the viewer into the image, adding some tree trunk texture with gentle pressure and um, short little lines. Now I'm adding this building on the right hand side. As you can see, uh, the line of the roof is tilting down towards the left because of perspective. So when I'm drawing buildings, I always draw those essential lines that defines the perspective. 
And then I fill the contour outline with uh, smaller details, like the windows. And now I see a man passing by. I'll just quickly capture his uh, his face, his collar area, and then I think he walked away. So I have to wait for another man to pass by and connect the rest of the body with the head. That's okay. So while waiting for another man to uh, come pass by, I am drawing these flags hanging around um, the top floor of this building and the balconies and some more uh, traffic signs and little people in the distance, those extremely foreshortened windows. And now finally, there's a man passing by, so I just drew his jacket and his walking legs. All right, he's kind of like dancing. Oh well, it's always fun. And adding some little details behind him, I think that's very much it for the drawing part. But before that, I need a little bit more little detail around the bottom right side of the tree here. Some more little polish, and here is the look of my finished line work. It took me about 17 minutes to draw. And now, the rest of the video, the painting process, is going to be in real time speed. Okay, just for you to really see my real rhythm of painting. So when drawing and painting anything, I always have a goal in my mind. Um, and then I just focus on the goal and um, not pushing for any other ex expeditions too much. So my goal for painting this scenery is to capture the dramatic contrast of the evening sunshine. So I'm just wetting the whole um, sketch area with clear water because I'm going to do a really loose wet into wet, a nice blending of warm colors and also colder browns and blues to get the contrast in. The first layer is always nice and gentle, so I just grab a little bit of cadmium yellow and mix it with a bit of orange. Dilute it a lot. Okay, most of the time for the first layer, I am always very gentle and get just this mellow color in. For these buildings, for the first layer and the top of the foliages. And because my goal is to capture the evening sunlight, I am not stressing about um, painting in a perfect way, just putting the colors perfectly inside these shapes. Especially when painting foliages, it should be like flowing loosely outside the tree and bushes form. And let's see, I'm grabbing a little bit more yellow orange it on the first layer of the street. It's like a uh, reflective color of the sun onto the concrete color of the street. And now I'm grabbing a bit of lime green to paint the bottom of the sky. As I always mentioned, the evening sky, uh, the area close to the horizon is more of a green to a turquoise color. And blending on bit of uh, cerulean blue, dilute it, let these two colors blend together softly by rubbing a little around their edges. It's a really fresh color. And the sky is going to be in a really nice contrast with the warm orange and browns underneath. Just keep spreading it nice and loose. So when I'm painting on location, I worry much less about making a perfect image. It should be like a really spontaneous uh, process. And also sometimes the weather and the condition might be a little challenging. And actually, I like that. I like working in a condition with some friction and challenges. So I could create something that I cannot create sitting in my comfortable home or studio. I feel that my mind is trying to be more creative, working in a slightly challenging condition, like painting outdoors and the uh, in the public. Okay, and now um, I think the sky is done. I'm ready to add another layer for the buildings. So I just mix a bit of orange with a little bit of burnt sienna. Yeah, mostly orange for the top part of these buildings. And also now this layer, the paint is mixed with way less water compared to the first layer. Because these buildings are solid objects compared to the sky 
and so the paint uh, should contain less water. So we have these solid colors of orange and orange browns. Putting on some leftover raw umber for this building here. Okay, and now grabbing some leftover blue and leftover grays for the bottom part of these buildings in general because my goal is to capture the contrast of the evening sunshine. So we do need to be brave to punch in these uh, less saturated colors. So to show a dramatic lighting condition, we can't just use bright, warm, and uh, saturated colors only. We have to use some darker ones in contrast with the warmer colors, just to show the brightness of the light. And now I'm punching on some leftover yellow oranges for the foliages in the distance, nice and loose, with choppy brushstrokes. And trying to get some colors of the fallen leaves on the sidewalk. Yeah, so this paper is kind of curls up a little bit after like a wet wash of watercolor, so just kind of bending it up. And grabbing a little bit of burnt sienna, mix it with a bit of viridian green to paint this evergreen tree. Yeah, so it's nice to have a bit of green here in the middle of these oranges and browns. And trying to get a shade tone by mixing even more burnt sienna into the viridian green. And use small and choppy brushstrokes it's good to show your brush strokes when you're painting trees, just to get the texture of the tree in. And also for this tree in the distance, it's almost like a silhouette. So I am always super motivated to paint from real life observations compared to working from photos, because I am actually being in this uh, dynamic, three dimensional world. There's, um, you know, a million possibilities of a composition and seeing how to use colors uh, compared to working from a photo. A photo is just like a small uh, clipping of the uh, visual reality only. So now I am sitting in real life. I could actually blend in my feelings of the, uh, the chilly autumn air, the wind, the smell of the restaurants around into this painting. So there's actually uh, much more quality um, in my on-location paintings compared to those very neat studio paintings. Um, yeah, so on-location paintings, they have their own special life themselves. And now just grabbing a little orange, red, and burnt sienna. Combine it with a little leftover grayish green to add more brick textures using choppy brushstrokes. Because this building is the closest to me, it deserves more detail. And some more blue for the eave area of this building. Nice uh, blue and turquoise color there. And some lemon yellow for the little gaps in between. Some more um, vibrant yellows and clear brushstrokes for the foliages there. It's actually in the center of the sketch, so I wanted to make it a little bit more detailed there. Okay, so now the first layer of the street is very much dry that I think I'm almost ready to paint the shadow. But before that, I just want to add some final little polish on the top area of these buildings on the left. Okay, now I'm ready to be bold. Just grabbing a little um, ultramarine blue or a cobalt blue, mix it with a bit of royal purple to get this nice shadow color. First painting the curb and then spread it very broadly and also keeping this color diluted. So the, the vibrant, mellow yellow is still shining through this gray color underneath. 
This is the charm of watercolors. When we're adding a new layer, the previous layer is not being completely covered. Okay, and now I'm ready to move on to add some colors for the limbs of the tree. Just grabbing a bit of um, orange and burnt sienna. And use the very tip of my round brush to punch these colors in. So the top areas of these trees are being brightened up by the sunshine. And some more. Every brush stroke is slightly different. Just mixing in more or less yellow or orange or brown. And now I am grabbing some medium to darker shades of brown for the middle to the lower part of this tree. This is a mix of raw umber with burnt sienna. For the middle to the bottom of this tree and more raw umber. Down the 70% of the tree that are away from the uh, range of the sunshine. And same for this tree as well, about 70% is in the shade. And using the leftover browns for the top of that tree very quickly. And moving on to the final polish stage, just being a bit more patient and using the very tip of the brush to get these um, twigs done and some more brush marks to get a feel of the tree trunk. Grabbing a little bit of blue to paint these flags. This is the flag of Quebec. So while I'm painting this area, um, the other areas are gradually drying. So now I think I'm ready to add some more denser shade areas for the bottom of these buildings to get the contrast even better. So this is a mix of like ultramarine blue or cobalt blue with a bit of um, red brown. And not overpainting, just in a certain areas. And just kind of blend it a little bit with the previous layer of warmer colors. And same for the bottom part of this building as well. And I want a smooth transition from this cold brown to the warm orange browns. A little more leftover gray for the other areas on the right. Painting the street sign. And taking a little pause to see what other little polish that I need to add on. Just painting this person's outfit with a leftover bluish gray and a little shadow underneath the shoes. And grabbing a little bit of black to paint this man's outfit. He's like walking out of the picture. But I didn't paint the street all the way down the page because I want to leave a little white space. It's like this man is walking out. I'm creating a sense of interest in here. So when we're drawing and painting, we have a lot of freedom to be creative about the compositions. We don't always need to draw a frame or use masking tape to, to create a nice, neat frame. I actually like a natural organic frame like this. It really looks like it's emerging onto the page in a natural way without any um, constraints. Some more warmer yellow oranges for the top of this tree to suggest the warm atmosphere of the evening. Yeah, and some more yellow oranges here on the little thin twigs. So these brush strokes are very gentle and almost invisible, but they are still pretty important. And there we go. I think I'm ready to call it done now. It's very free and loose.
Here is a look of my finished sketch and the whole sketchbook spread. So thank you so much for watching this video everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So in December, I'm trying to update this channel almost every day because I filmed a lot of videos in Montreal. And I still have loads of videos to edit and upload to share with you. And so have a great weekend, everyone. I will see you again probably tomorrow. I'll upload another video. Bye, everyone.